It can happen to anyone. I have some social media regrets, I will admit. So it's not easy to navigate the world of social media in part because we're still writing the rules, right? So how do you minimize your mistakes? We're going to show you with the help of Matt Siegel. He's co-founder and president of OurTime.org. It's a nonprofit that organizes millennials around issues that are important to them. He's also part of that video we just saw about Tiffany and unplugging there. Also here with us, Dan Schauble, author of Promote Yourself, The New Rules for Career Success, and Kara Friedman, she's Senior Director of Marketing at Likeable Media. Hi, guys. Hi, how's it going? Are you ready to talk about media and keeping it clean? Absolutely. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> Matt, let's start with you. OurTime.org is your organization. You are really pivotal in helping young adults connect with opportunities in employment and education. Let's talk about employers and educators. What can they do to better adapt to clearly a, of a generation that's so connected, too connected, some would argue. Well, for one, they have a wonderful opportunity to actually solicit feedback as to how they can improve their educational climate, their business, etc. Mm -hmm. They can say, what do you like about our product? What do you like about our classroom? What do you want in the cafeteria? How can we make books more affordable, and then based on what people tweet or post back to them, really consider that feedback. And rather than hire a marketing firm or a polling firm to find it for them, they can do it for free. And have a Twitter account maybe as well to connect? Have a Twitter account to push it out, have a Facebook account, an Instagram account. I mean, we live in a world now where people are not logging on websites. You have mm -hmm. to have social media to push out information. People subscribe to you, and then you push it out when it's necessary, when you want feedback as opposed to just assuming people are going to necessarily visit your homepage. Because I know some institutions might resist that. You know, they don't want to get too involved in social media. Uh, they might even fight it. But you say embrace it. I say embrace it. I say uh, not only uh, can you uh, recruit people, but you can also show a personality. Yeah. You can show some spiciness. You can show uh, what, how you differ from your competitors. And you can really recruit people to want to be part of a community where uh, there's a voice, there's a personality, and there's a vibrancy. Kara, your company is Likeable Media, yeah. helps to leverage leverage social media to basically help clients uh, get more clients, yes. uh, get more exposure. If your client was a millennial, uh, a born digital student, what would be your advice on how they should correctly leverage social media to develop their brand? You know, one of the things that we say to our clients is sometimes being the best is not as good as being the first one and we constantly want people to be innovating and being the first in that space and trying out new things so I would definitely recommend for millennials that they should be uh, trying to use social media in ways that haven't been used before when trying to look for a job you know be creative and go outside the box instead of you know handing in that one page resume that everyone grew up knowing and kind of perfecting why don't you make a, a blog that really showcases your excellent written and communication skills or create a YouTube channel that shows me that you're an excellent public speaker or even target Facebook ads to your future employer and show, you know, this is the, something I want to do and I'm actually really good at it and mm -hmm. here's how and show it in real life. And Dan, of course, I think this you would agree with Karen, and even more so because you've written textbook, you've written books on this. Your latest, uh, you know, it talks about the importance of branding, which I agree with. But how do you, as a, a millennial, how do you watch out? Because I think that when you focus too much on building your brand, uh, as an employer, that may seem too me-centric, right? I'm an employer. I want you to come on board and be company-centric, company-focused. Is there a fine line between maybe uh, t catering to your own brand, but also making yourself marketable to employers as, hey, I'm going to be a team player? Yeah, absolutely. The top three skills, I just did a study with American Express for the book, and they're looking, you need to be able to prioritize work, have a positive attitude, and teamwork skills. Those are the top three that they're looking for, and especially communication skills. We did another study, and so you want to really highlight those, these skills and really showcase them, and through social media, like we were just talking about, through YouTube and, and your writing skills, you can really... It, you can really depict who you are on uh, in, with your soft skills, not just your hard skills. And you really need to position yourself, and that's what branding is all about. So yeah. you know where the opportunities are. You want to brand yourself for those type of opportunities so people know when they, they're searching for people like you that you come up. For freshmen entering college right now, though, they may not know what they want to major in, let alone where they're going to end up 
uh, in after four years or five years as it is. So how do you advise a young adult who's really lost at sea in college in terms of how to position themselves, start to brand themselves in a way that's healthy and applicable no matter what they pursue in academia or in the corporate world? The smartest thing you can do when you're first starting out in college is to have as many experiences as possible. For me, it was eight internships. I had my own small company. I did everything because that's how you narrow down what you want to do. And the more you realize what you want to do and what you don't want to do, the more you'll be able to focus your brand on the opportunities that you want to attract. And using the online world, it's like the law of attraction. The more you put out there, the more people will see that, see those websites come back to you with the right opportunities, not the wrong ones. Let's focus on privacy now, because this is a huge issue for everybody. But sometimes I feel like when you're on campus, you think you live in a bubble, and what happens on campus stays on campus. But not if you're posting last night's frat party pictures on Facebook. Everyone's going to see that potentially. Kara, what do you think uh, college students need to know when they're online? And, and being sort of transparent, what to watch out for? So I think step one is really search yourself, so Google yourself, or there's a great website called Spokio where they can pretty much track all the information that you've ever put out there on the internet and see what exactly is out there about me. And employers are going to do that already, so as long as you can see what's out there, that's how they're going to kind of judge you. So mm -hmm. once you know what's out there about you, you can kind of filter back, take back the things that you want people to see you as hide the other things that you may not want other people to see you as. The general rule, obviously, is don't put anything out there on the internet that you wouldn't want your family that to see. That your grandmother might be your looking Your grandmother <laughs> might be looking. Your grandma's on Facebook now, so, yeah. 10% yeah. of millennials lose job opportunities because of what they put online, and over 90% of college recruiters are using these social networks to recruit. Good. But there's, you know, it's not all doom and gloom because there's actually an opportunity to get hired through social media. Mm -hmm. You can stalk your employer in a right. good way. You can yeah. learn what's their favorite sports team or what are they tweeting about or what are the articles or the news uh, and, and political policies that they're writing about and that they're putting into the public forum. Use what's out there in the open internet to gain valuable intelligence and then leverage that intelligence in a conversation, in an interview, when you're writing a blog for their business or a, a, an essay to apply. And so there are major advantages uh, to uh, the open internet as well. And the big picture is that resumes, the traditional resume of having a PDF or a Word document on your desktop are fading away. It's all gonna be about what the online world says about you. And if you're not proud about what the online world says about you, it doesn't actually pr mm -hmm. project who you are, then you're gonna be missing out on all these opportunities. All right, Matt, Cara, Dan, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to uh, toss it now. Well, 